Friday night at 6 o'clock. Friday night at 6 o'clock. Okay. Louise? That was it. Okay. And there are some special edition announcements to be made. Let's begin with Martha. Where's Martha? Martha. Right here. 
make sure I'm gassed up. Yeah. All you gotta do is you walk right on the boat and it goes down. I can move in and out. Good morning. I'd like to give you a little information about the picnic that the deacons are planning. It is going to be held Sunday morning, May the 20th, after church service, of course. Everybody is required to come to church first. At Casperson Beach, which is south of Sharkies, um in Venice. Everybody familiar with it? Or I know I wasn't. I drove out yesterday to see it. They have totally redone that area. It is beautiful. There's a very nice shelter there. There is a playground right next to the shelter. There are new restroom facilities. And it's very quiet because it's at the dead end of Harbor Drive in Venice. So you go down past Sharkies and you feel like you're driving, you're driving to the ocean. And when you come to the dead end, you turn left and there's plenty of parking, plenty of restroom facilities. So it's going to be held on the 20th after church from 11.30 to 3.30. You get it for four hours. There's a, I'm sorry? In my beautiful green lawn. No, after church. After church. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board in the fellowship hall. We're asking everybody that attends to um, bring a dish to share and also bring your own beverages. We're going to provide big coolers so you can put your beverages on ice. And we're also going to have hot dogs and hamburgers. So hope everybody will come. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, thank you, Martha. When you come to church that Sunday, come dressed for the picnic, uh, so you're all ready to go. And it's very easy to get to. You just go up 41, and when you come to the fork in the road, you take it. <laughs> Norm. here to announce on Mother's Day luncheon is coming up. It's going to be held at the fishery in uh, Placidia, and we're going to meet here at the church at 11 o'clock for those who want to carpool, and for those who don't, we can meet at the fishery at quarter to 12. Um, so we need signatures now because we're going to have to call on our reservations. One other little note. Um, you can see our generation pictures, they keep growing all the time. It's such a wonderful thing. When I call these people, all the, our members up, and they tell me about their family, you know, it's very warm and comforting to know a little bit more about our fellow members. And then I went out this week and I did my monthly visitation. I go to the nursing homes and visit our shut-ins. And unbeknownst to anybody, nobody announces, we're just this kind of a family at this church. And I thought everyone should know that it's not just me who goes out and visits and, and Martha um, that go out and visit our shut-ins, but think we just go on our own. For example, Ruth Carpenter is up at the consulate and Mary Williams was there this week and our pastor was there too. So she had three visitors this week. And it was just an opportune time. She's feeling very low and needs that boost. So if you're in the area around the mall, go over and say, just stop in and say five minutes with her. That's all she needs. She's such a delightful person. Um, thank you. And I just want to thank you all for jumping in there and visiting people. You're wonderful. Thank you, Norm. Any other announcements? Let us be in worship.
Dear friends, let us come together about the table this morning as the family of God in Christ, bound together by our one creator in the common covenant of love. Jesus instructs us to love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God, for God is love. Let us join in singing Love Divine while love's excelling in number 74, and you're invited to stand. Fill us. 
this morning's gospel reading. John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the world. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither you can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. I'd like to have the children come and join me up in the front, please. <laughs> You all know what that means. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> but I'm glad to know that. Well, I was out doing some yard work the other day, and I found bees just laying in the ground. So I get them ready to move the water. I had to pick them up. Not very many leaves on them, is there? And then we were trimming a tree, and we trimmed this one off of the tree, and it still it has, a, has a bunch of leaves on it. But what's going to happen to those leaves after a while? They'll fall off. How come? Yeah. You know why? Well, they're not still on the tree. If I take these, and put them in the ground and water them. They're going to come back to life? Probably not. I could probably put a lot of water on them, and what they would end up being is sticks in the mud. <laughs> Even this one. Because in order to produce leaves, they need to be connected to the tree which is where all the nutrients are, is in the tree. And in our Bible reading this morning, Jesus was saying that he is the vine and we are the branches. And we need to be connected to Jesus in the same way that we need to be connected to the tree. And apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. But connected to Jesus, we can produce fruit. It's like a fruit. And what is that fruit? The fruit is that we love one another and we love other people. And that's what Jesus is hoping that we'll do because God is one. That's important to know. And that's our lesson for today. And that's what your puzzles will be about. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus showing us your love and knowing that Jesus invites us to be joined with him that we may love in the way that he loved and produce the fruit of love that he produced. Amen. Okay, it's communion today, so you can come back sit.
This is our time when we do our celebrations and concerns, and I ask you what it is that you would like to celebrate today. While you're thinking about that, I'm going to tell you what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that we returned from a very, very good uh, annual meeting of the Florida Conference yesterday and Friday. And so we celebrate the Florida Conference and all of the uh, 70 some, is that what they call those churches that are in the Florida Conference now? 90 some. I don't do well with numbers. Okay. But anyhow, there are a lot of us, there are a lot of churches in the Florida Conference. And one of the things that was stressed is how much we really do need each other in order to help each other do the ministries. So just as the parable that Jesus was saying, we are all connected to the vine lots of branches and each church is like a branch. What do you have to celebrate today? My son Stephen was made to fly back on May 17th, isn't it? All right. Very good. I celebrate Recognition and smiles and things, so things are coming along well. 
coming along but still in need of our prayers after his motorcycle accident. Let us turn our hearts in prayer. Precious God, we lift our hearts up to you as a people who know that we have been blessed by so much. And today we hear about how we are blessed with your healing power and strength that does work for good in our bodies and in our souls. We are thankful for our family, friends. We are thankful for the support of this church, the way it also is a vine, and each is joined with it. We ask you, O oh God, to be with those who are in need of continued healing and strength. Pray for people who are cut off and alone and not a part of any kind of connected system. That we might find ways of reaching out to them and joining them with us and with you. We do pray for the church. especially for this part of the church that we are a part of, the United Church of Christ. May it continue to be a church that is of the future. Now we ask, O oh God, that you listen to each of us as we bring to you the prayers that are in our hearts.
members of your body, we bring not only our offering of money for the work of Christ, but our commitment to be gladly sharing with those who hunger and thirst within or without the church. Sharing the bread that satisfies and the living water that quenches the dryness of the soul. Receive and bless this offering. story about an Air Force pilot during the Second World War whose plane was struck with artillery fire somewhere over the Pacific. And he had to bail out over an island that was reputably inhabited by cannibalistic headhunters. Terror struck him the instant his parachute afforded a soft landing on the white sands of the beach. There was not only the possibility of being captured by Japanese soldiers who might have infiltrated the island, but there was also the chance of his becoming a delicacy at the evening meal of the natives. As he cautiously walked inland through the thick jungle, he observed a column of smoke coming from a campfire. Anxiously, he crept closer, attempting to camouflage his body with tropical leaves, and still he could not see through the thicket with sufficient clarity to discern who else inhabited this tiny island. But he was close enough to suddenly hear someone near the stream of smoke shout in a distinct voice, why in the Blankety blank blank did you trump my ace? <laughs> Whereupon the pilot threw himself to his knees, threw his hands to the heavens, as tears gushed from his eyes, cried out, Thank God I'm among Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Our identity as Christians. 
What are the essential ingredients to our being disciples of Christ? Is it our language? Or is it our dress? What is it that colors and flavors us as Christians? The early church was clear that to be a Christian disciple was to be joined to God through Christ as a vine is joined to its source in order to receive nourishment and thus produce fruit. But this raises another question. Then who or what is God? We may think that that's an unnecessary question. We like to think that we all know who God is. But according to church historian Martin Marty, he says, even though most Americans say they believe in God, they don't seem to have any clear idea of who this God is. God for most Americans, says Marty, is no more than a warm feeling like taking a bath. In seminary, theology students often struggle with intellectual definitions about who God is. My personal favorite used to be, God is the creative process of integrative interaction. Sort of grabs you right here. Gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? Doesn't it sort of make you want to stand up and sing the hallelujah chorus? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> the Bible is much more simple and direct. It says, God is love. But what does that mean? We need to be careful lest we get sentimental about this and confuse love with love. The Greek word used here for God's love is agathos, not the feel-good love of Eros. Simply put, the Bible's idea of God's love goes like this. God loves us. God cares. God cared so much, says the gospel, that God came to us in a person through Jesus in order to meet us, to know us, to share our life, and to share our death, to deliver us, to preserve us, to give us eternal life. God loves us all the time, wherever we are, whoever we are, and whatever happens. And this love enables us to do the same. Do you want to know what love is really like? When Jesus asked, was asked that question, what is God like? He told the story of the Good Samaritan. This is a story that contains assault and robbery, indifference, racial prejudice, spontaneous kindness, practical care, and a pledge towards planned giving. It was one person going out of the way to help another unknown to him at the time, but one who was in trouble. Love cares about others and acts on that love. The church is a lovely entangled vine in this love, whose purpose is to produce fruit, lots of fruit. To say it another way, the church is a community of people who are all different, but are joined together in a covenant with love. And this love, which is God. 
Christians are people who have a wonderfully strange sense of belonging to one another, of caring for one another, of being creatively entangled. Think about how we are entangled in this church. Think about the times when people here, when you have had a need, a need to share a celebration, a need to share a crisis, or a joy. This entangled fellowship offers us support while the world is coming apart. A biblical image that seems appropriate is that the church is a lifeboat on a ranging storm-tossed sea of confusion and loneliness. The United Church of Christ theologian Walter Brueggemann suggests that the uniqueness of the church is that it is a zone for humanness. Understood biblically, it is covenantal in nature. People exist as humans, according to our biblical understanding, in the making of covenants. Remember back to a prior sermon, it is the glue that holds us together. We are covenanting people. The church is a covenanting community. People come together by mutual consent to offer themselves in support of one another in the fellowship of God's love made known in Christ. We live in a rapidly changing world where there are many things going on that are not to our liking. There are values that are very different from the ones we affirm and try to uphold in our lives. We and our children and our grandchildren need the support of the divine churches in our lives. In a Peanuts comic strip, Lucy is parked in her psychiatric booth and Charlie Brown is sharing his problems with her. Sometimes I ask myself, he begins, sometimes I ask myself, is this your real life or is this just a pilot film? Is my life a 39-week series, or is it something special? And at no time at all, Lucy analyzes his problem and gives an instant answer, whatever it is, your ratings are down. <laughs> Five cents, please. <laughs> We've all felt that way, haven't we? The church is important for its caring, loving fellowship during those times. We are a vine church, and we produce fruit through our care. Norma expressed that so well in the announcements this morning. The people of this church who call on one another, care for one another. And then we reach out in our mission to share love with others. We participate in God's love. Sometimes the fruits are almost immediate, but more often they come in another season and they're further along on the vine. A few years ago, a clergy colleague shared the story of a boy who had grown up in the church. He was one of those boys you really would like to have find something else to do instead of coming to youth group and Sunday. His primary task was to disrupt things. Then after graduation from high school, he became a soldier in Iraq. His church sent him, along with the other service people from their church, letters while things were very uncertain over there in Iraq. And the young man wrote back that the letters were important. And it got him to think, and it let him know that God was a part of his life. He came home. He went to church in uniform and stood up during the worship 
to thank the congregation for accepting him and supporting him and showing him God's love. During the last act of the musical Les Miserables, the hero, Jean Valjean, sings some of the most memorable and moving lines of the whole play. The importance of music. Take my hand and lead me to salvation. Take my love, for love is everlasting. 